God and just say, I'm grateful for your promises. You know, people don't play about their promises. You know, when you were growing up, somebody make a promise. Thank you for keeping your word, Lord. You promised me this, and you promised me that, and you kept your word. Uninhibited, unrestricted, uncalculated. Come on, lift up a shout of praise. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for keeping your promises. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a promise keeper. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, we honor you, we glorify you, we lift you up, we magnify you, we extol you, we exalt you. We love to lift you high, we love to lift you high. We count it an honor and a pleasure and a privilege to be in your presence. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. No, 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 no. Not even all that he's done for me. Just the most recent thing that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God, to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory, we lift you up. Ha. Glory, we honor you. Woo. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Oh, oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Come on, we normally do our confessions and affirmations and proclamations before we start. So you just shout one out in the atmosphere. Because we've been going over them, so you should know a few of them in your heart. So just shout one out in the atmosphere. Come on, shout one out in the atmosphere. I am the healed of God. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. My employment is blessed. My side hustle. Is, come on, throw it out in the atmosphere. We've been, we've been saying them every Sunday. Put them over it. I expect preferential treatment. Come on, put it in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. You'll have whatever you say. Come on, two more. You'll have whatever you say. Hallelujah. World outreach is a beacon of light. Come on, come on, come on. Put it in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Unscripted. Oh. And, and, and you should see those. You should see those. You should see that happening in your life. I've been seeing it. Anybody else been seeing it? To turn to somebody else, I've been seeing it. What we've been, what we've been declaring every Sunday, I've been seeing it. Hallelujah. Come on. And we declare that he's Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> we give you glory. You're great and mighty, Lord. Oh, you're so amazing. So, so, so amazing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come on, everybody. Put your hands together like this. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Clap those hands, everybody. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, come on. Clap your hands. Oh, that sounds so good. Oh, let's just release that clap in the atmosphere. God rained down like the rain in the sky. God shined down like the sun. God rained down like the rain from the sky. God shined down like the sun. Everybody say, God rained down like the rain from the sky. God shined down like the sun. Yeah. God rain down like the rain from the sky. God shine down like the sun. Everybody say Alpha and Omega. Here we go. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. Let the whole church say Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Come on, one more time, everybody. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Yes, you are. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Come on, let's take it up.
Everybody say, you are great and mighty. You are great and mighty. And we will bless your name. We will bless your name. Angels bow before you. Angels bow before you. There's power in your name. There's power in your Everybody name. Everybody say, you are great and mighty. You are great and mighty. We will bless your name. We will bless your name. Angels bow before you.
Shout out that name. Y'all know how to shout. Come on, shout. You know how to shout. today for the opportunity to shout your name, to give your name the glory, the honor that it's due. Oh, what a blessing it is. What a blessing it is. You know, I kind of feel like we didn't really connect with that song the way that we could have, but there's something in that song. We shout your name. And I'm telling you, I love those verses of scripture. Where in the word of God, somebody would shout God's name. They would just shout out and walls would come tumbling down. You know, we need to understand the power of our shout, the power of our voice, that there's victory when we open our mouths and we declare the goodness and the power of our God. And so, Lord, we thank you today that we can shout your name. We magnify you and we glorify you today. We have an expectation in this place. Come on, y'all. Let's come in together. Come on, bring your supply in this place right now. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We praise you. We magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. There is a shout that belongs to you. And so, Father, we honor and magnify the name that is above every name. You know, this week I've been listening to this song, and the words of the song is just, Yeshua. That's it. Yeshua, ah, ah, ah. come on, y'all. Yeshua, ah, ah, ah. grateful to have Jesus in our life. He's our Savior and our Redeemer. And you know, I love that name Yeshua because it doesn't matter whether you say it in Hebrew, it's Yeshua. If you say it in English, it's Yeshua. It is the Savior, the Healer, the Redeemer, the one that's coming to deliver us. Lord, we're so grateful. We're so grateful for his role in our lives and for all that he has done. Come on, y'all, one more time. Come on, church, you sing it. Yes, you.
Glory to God. In this atmosphere, go to someone, give them a hug, tell them he's Lord of all. He's King of kings and Lord of all. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. the verse to that. My beloved is oh most beautiful among thousands thousands my beloved is oh most beautiful among thousands thousands Father, we're blessed to know you, to love you, to walk with you. Thank you. Thank you for where you're taking us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We want to welcome you this morning to World Outreach and Bible Training Center. Here at World Outreach and Bible Training Center, we have four imperatives, four things that we believe that God has called and commissioned us to do. The first thing is to win people that are not close to God and win them close, to bring them close in proximity to where the Father is, to say, hey, there's someone that loves you. There's someone that will take your life and turn it around. The second thing that we want to do is mend lives. And that what that looks like is we're saying, here's God's word. This is the oil and the wine that's necessary to, to close every wound that you may have. And God will then take their life and bring them to their place of freedom. The second, the third thing that we do is we disciple them. In other words, we want them to lo look like Jesus, talk like Jesus, walk like Jesus, act like Jesus in all that they do. And then we turn them around and send them out into the world so that they can make a difference. 
And so it's when men disciple sin, and I'm telling you all, in this season, we are more committed to doing that than we have ever been. And we're just thankful for the fact that God has called us to do it. Are you all ready to engage more in worship now? You know, it's one thing when, you know, when somebody gets up here and it's like pulling teeth. But I'm telling you, nobody can worship for me. And I'm not going to leave it to these singers and all of them to give God what only I can give. I want him to know how appreciative I am for the things that he has done for me. And even in those places in my life that may, it may not be, it may not be like I want it to be right now. But I'm telling you, if I continue to stand believing and trusting, it's just a matter of time before I see the manifestation of God in my life. It's going to be just like I say, because what I say, I'm saying it based on God's word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
confident in this. This is my declaration. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself. I will remain. I'm not changing my mind. When it gets hard, I'm not going to turn around and run back. I will remain. I'm remaining confident in his promises because they are true. Yes and amen it is. I will remain. 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 I will remain steadfast. I will remain steadfast. Steadfast in you, my God. I will remain confident. I will remain confident in your promises. For those of you that do not know, Pastor Skip is scheduled to have a, a surgery next Monday. And um, the challenge that he's having is with his hip and it's giving him some more challenges. And so he's going to minister the word sitting down. But we believe that God has, uh, the work is already done, y'all. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to seal it. Because this is going to be his last service with us. And so we're going to seal, not last service, but this is his last service for a season. We're going to pray for him. We're going to lay hands on him. We're going to believe with him. And I'm just asking you all to release your faith according to the word of God. Matthew 18, 19 says, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they ask. Now, let me tell you this. We have already believed and received. What you're doing is you're setting your agreement with our faith. So we're not asking God to do this again. It's already done. We've already prayed for the doctor. We've already prayed for the surgeon. We've already prayed for the nurses. We've already prayed for everybody that's going to be involved. What we want is your agreement with that. Can we get your agreement? Because it's already done. So, Father, today in the name of Jesus, we lay our hands on our pastor and we thank you that the divine lobrodo da baka itana mashata, the divine power of God is flowing in his body 
right now. It is bringing about a healing and a cure. And if you're listening to me right now and you're watching on streaming or if you're in this room and there's something going on with your hips or any place in your body, put your hand on that area of your body because there is a, a, a rabba soto. There is a healing in the atmosphere. There is an anointing in the atmosphere for you to receive. God, we thank you for the download right now. In the barobosa, candianda de bosa, in the bosa. We set our agreement with what you've already spoken, with what you've already decreed and declared in your word. You said in your word, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Don't forget God's benefits, who forgives all of our iniquities and healeth all of our diseases. You said in Isaiah 53 that he would grow up before them as a root out of dry ground, that there would be no comeliness as far as we could see, and there would be no beauty that we would desire him. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of Yahweh, our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Father, you said according to 1 Peter 2 and 24, by the stripes of Jesus, healing is ours, and so we claim it right now. We appropriate it right now. We walk in it right now. We say it so. We say it's ours right now. Right now in the name of Jesus children's bread and so right now we partake we partake we digest the healing power of God come on y'all lift your hands we receive right now the download father God it's actually an upload that healing's coming out of you and so father we thank you for every gift that you put in us the anointing didn't I say that I would heal your body if you would step over into faith? Didn't I decree and declare in my word that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father? I am the Father, the Father is saying. And I sent forth those gifts, those manifestations that your body longs for that your heart longs for every person with cancer in your body right now receive 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 that anointing is in the room to bring about the healing and the cure and so we call it done we call it done we call it done now in the name that is above every name. Thank you for strength. And thank you for the ability to minister the word with boldness and clarity. Thank you, Father, that he'll put a demand on his spirit. And we'll be the recipients of the blessing of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, let's thank God that it's done. Come on, church. Let's bless him that it's done. It's done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this amazing day that you've made, and we are excited about all that this day holds. Because in this day holds success. In this day holds prosperity and expansion, healing and deliverance and salvation. All that you are, Father, you've made it all, and you've put it all in this day. So, Father, we tap into all that we need, we thank you that today, Father, you have opened up the eyes of our understanding and flooded our hearts with light, illumination, and revelation. Father, today we're going to see like we've never seen before. 
We're going to hear like we've never heard before. We're going to understand like we never understood before, Father. So we can do what we've never done before. Now, Father, I thank you that you've anointed me to minister this word on a level that the church and the world is unfamiliar with. All to the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord, you may be seated. I just want to thank everybody who came out to help with uh, Sister Tucker's uh, homecoming service yesterday. <laughs> World Outreach, for those of you who are here, did an absolute amazing job serving that family. There was over a, almost a thousand people in this building yesterday. Any place we could put them, they were there and they weren't leaving. So thank God for that. But we have been talking about faith. And we've come from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 in the New King James. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 over in the Passion Translation says it like this. Now, faith brings our dreams into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. How many of y'all got some things that you're longing for? You got to get your foundation right so that the things you long for can be obtained because it is built on top of faith. And so... What I understand about God is so often when we, when we talk about faith, we, some, so, some of us faith teachers have made it so deep and mysterious and, and all wonderful and, and out there, but the Lord had shared with me, you got to break this down. You got to break it down in such a way that it can be truly received and understood by your people or by his people. That God wants his words, concepts, and precepts to be easily understood and followed for the benefit of the hearer. He wants, he wants you to be able to understand what he's talking about. He wants it to be broken down so much that, you know, even the Bible itself, the old, the old Bible was written on a fifth grade level. And now the newer Bibles is only uh, written on a sixth grade level. So he tried to make it as basic and as easy for us to understand as we possibly can. And so the Lord again began to deal with me. Break this down. Break it down to a place where everybody can understand it. They're not on your level of faith. So stop trying to make them be on your level of faith. And what we're not going to do is we're not faith shaming anybody. Which can be easily done. Oh, you don't, you, don't, you don't believe like I believe? No, 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 no. All we need is a grain of mustard seed to move a mountain. So let's break it down to the level where we all can understand it. And so I have to break this down to the basic things of faith, which is number one, what is faith? And we talked about that. Number two, how do we get faith? And we talked about that last week. But this week, I want to talk about how to release and use or activate your faith. How many of y'all want to know how to do that? All right, so let's get into it. So we're going to talk about that. Um, to do kind of a review of, of last week, there are two distinct different kinds of faith. There is the world's faith, and then there's biblical faith. The, the dictionary defines the world's faith as confidence or trust in a person or thing Belief that is not based on proof. How do you have faith in something that isn't proven? But that's what they describe faith to be. Now, biblical faith comes from a reliable source and based on the truth and can be proven. Can you prove that the word works? How many of you are saved? Raise your hand if you've given your life to Christ. You've just proven that the word can take you from eternal darkness to eternal light. It's proven. How many of you have ever been healed? You've proven that God is a healer. 
it can be proved. How many of you have been delivered or set free from something? So you have, are living proof that God's word is the truth and it can be proven. And so we got into Romans chapter 10, verse 17 last week. And that scripture says, now faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And we begin to break that down some, um, and we talked about the word comes. Keep that up again, please. So often, we look at that and we say, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we take this scripture and we assume that it means this, when I do this, I have faith. But that word comes means exactly what it says. The word come is defined as um, to approach or to move toward a particular person or place. To arrive by movement or in the course of progress. To approach or to arrive in time. So we can say this. So then, faith starts to approach or to move towards you when you hear the word of God. It didn't say when you hear the word of God, you have it. It says it's coming your way. It's approaching you. It's coming in your direction. So the more you hear the word, the more faith comes towards you. It reminds me of, of a helicopter. Because you can hear the word and hear the word and hear the word. And it just hovers over you. It's there waiting. It's waiting for you. It just hovers over you. It wants to land, but just hearing it ain't going to be what makes it land. What makes that word land is when you receive it and say it. You now have given that word permission to land in your heart and to produce what it's been called to do. Now, that word hearing is the word okio, and it means orally speaking or through the ear. In other words, so then faith approaches by the rhema word, the spoken word. It comes from hearing. Being, you have to hear the word for it to keep approaching you. Now, you know that you have faith, again, when your conviction of truth of anything has formed what you believe. Psalms 119 and 11 in the New King James says this. Your word have I hidden in my heart so that I might not sin against you. That word sin means to miss the mark. So he said, I hide your rhema word. When I hear it, I hide it so that I don't keep missing the mark when I go out to accomplish what you've called me to do. I'm on target because I keep hearing your word. And it's hidden. The Amplified says it like this. Your word have I treasured and stored in my heart that I may not sin against you. He said, I put value on it, so I treasured it, and I hid it. The things that you treasure, you don't let everybody see. There's certain things that you have that's so important that you put a password on it. You put a password on it so everybody can't access it. Everybody don't need to know that information. That's for certain people to have certain access to that part of your life. It's the same thing with the word of God. You should be having a password on your heart. That's why he said, guard it with all diligence. Put a password on. Don't let everybody have access to your heart because not everybody can be trusted. So we have to have when you put that word in you, it has to be password protected. And the password that protects it is the speaking of faith. 
So now doubt can't get in there because it's protected by faith. Somebody says something that's doubt and unbelief. Well, that can't get in my heart because it's protected by the confession of faith. So we understand that faith is received by what we hear. But today I want to talk about how faith is released or activated by what you say. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33 through 38 in the New Living says this. I'm sorry, the New King James. A tree is known by its fruit. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit is bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the mouth of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Oxford uh, Dictionary looked at that word and it says it like this. Overwhelming feelings of the heart will express itself in speech. Overwhelming feelings of the heart, overwhelming feelings of the heart will express itself through speech. You ever go up to somebody and you make the mistake of saying, how you doing? And then, Wah! they unload on you. They, whoa, 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 whoa. That was a courtesy. I really wasn't ready to hear all that you have to say. Or you bring up somebody's name in the presence of somebody and all this stuff comes out like, wait, whoa, whoa. I didn't need to know. I, but what happened? Their hearts is full of that. So as a result, it just comes out. I like to say it in this translation that says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth leaketh. Which means it can't stop itself. I, I, I just got to say that. Why? Because your heart has to be emptied somewhere and where it's emptied is in its speech. Let's keep reading. Verse 35. It says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. So what then if, is he talking about? What is the treasure that Jesus is talking about. Again, over in Psalms 119, again it says, your word have I hid in my heart, stored in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Again, that's where you keep your treasures. That's where your important things are. So why have I stored your word in my heart so that I don't miss the mark with my mouth? Why have I stored your word in my so I don't miss the mark with my mouth? Because where the mouth guides, the body follows. Where your mouth speaks, your life follows. So you have to make sure that your mouth stays connected to your heart that is full of the word. Because you can tell when somebody's mouth is not connected to the word. They may not, listen, they don't have to tell you out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to leak. But let's keep reading. Verse 36 says, but I say to you that every idle, non-productive word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Why does he say that like that? By your words you'll be justified or acquitted, or by your words you'll be judged or condemned. Because he understands that as a man thinketh, in his heart, that's who he really is. And so when he hears what comes out of your mouth, he understands, God, this is who you really are. You're not just saying that haphazard. No, 
Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth leaketh. And as a man thinks, he's going to leak out of his mouth. That's who you are. So he looks at you and says, listen, I got to get you hooked up to your faith, hook your mouth up to my word so we can accomplish what we've talked about doing. Because every time you say something opposite of what we said we were going to do, you keep pushing that thing farther away versus faith coming. Versus it approaching you, what you do is you keep saying, I don't want you here right now. I don't need you. He said, no, stop saying that. Because I want it to come towards you. I want it to come toward, I want you to attract. Faith words attract. The power and the plan of God. So why are your words so important? Because that's how God created the system. I can't tell you why he created the system. I just know that this is how he created it. Hebrews 11 and 3 says this. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So by faith, the world was framed by the rhema, the spoken word. Spoke things into existence. And how many of you have been forming your world by your words? How many of you have just been adding stuff that shouldn't be added or been talking stuff away that should be added. You're putting stuff in your life that never should have been there, but what you've been doing because God gave you the ability to do it. You've been forming your world. And what I love about God is you have the ability to change it if you change your speech. What do you not like in your life right now? Say something to it. Say what you want in your life. Too often we let our situation and circumstance dictate what we say about it. I could very easily say, oh, this pain in my hip is killing me. I could say that. And so what I would be doing is giving the permission for this pain to get worse as I'm standing here. Or I could speak to this pain and say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, I was healed. Therefore, I am if I already was. And I forever will be. But it's what you connect your mouth to will allow. Let me break. Your mouth is an employer. It's an employer. And you tell it who to hire. Either it's going to hire the kingdom of God and all its angels to work for you, or it's going to hire Satan and all its cohorts to work against you. But you are the one who checks the resume. You are the HR of your confession. You say who you want on your team. And for some, and for some things in your life, you have to say that like Donald Trump. You're fired. <laughs> But understand that God has given us that kind of ability to speak to those things. I love the message Bible of Hebrews 11 and 3. It says this. By faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we don't see. What we see is created by what we don't see. So if that chair was created by something we didn't see and God was able to put land together 
oceans, mountains, animals, people, all that together by stuff we don't see. How much more? How much more? God wants us to understand that we are ambassadors and we represent him on this earth. By using our faith, he wants us to go back to the original way we were created. Go with me to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Starting at verse 26 in the Amplified, and it says this. Then God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our own likeness, not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So he said, let me make man like me with the same spiritual authority that I have. Isn't that what he said? Not physically like me, but spiritually like me. Which means if he created things with his mouth, he then, because he is the God in us, that we're speaking his word, so we're speaking like him, then when we, create, when we say things, it's beginning to create as we speak. Let's keep reading. Verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image, and in the image and likeness of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And God blessed them, granting them certain authority, and said to them, Be fruitful, be multiplying, and be filling the earth and subjugate it. Put it under your power and rule over and dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves on the earth. If it moves, if it breathes, if it swims, if it flies, if it crawls, if it's wet, if it's dry, we have authority over it. And one one version says, and use all of the world's vast resources for the benefit or the help of God, God's people, and nature and others. So it's not just for us to get all puffed up, but it's to benefit others. Our faith is to benefit others. Our authority is to benefit others. But how do we benefit? By speaking life into their life. How do we benefit? By speaking the word of God which has the ability to come back to him in full manifestation of what we're saying. In order for us to to operate like little G's on the earth, this will be accomplished by faith. And you can't force it. Say, don't force it. Faith is not trying hard to believe. That is anxiety trying to look like faith. Should I say that again? Faith is not trying hard to believe. That is anxiety trying to look like faith. When you pass from trying to trusting, the basis of your life changes from yourself to God. And I believe too many people are still at that trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to walk by faith. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're trying too hard. And the Bible clearly says over in Philippians, oh, Jesus. Philippians 4 and 6 and 7 says, do not be anxious or worry about anything. But with everything, every circumstance and every situation, By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And when you do that, and the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, 
that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus is yours. So don't be anxious. Don't think you're worrying about something is faith because it ain't. You can't be in faith and be in worry at the same time. He says, be anxious for some things. Be anxious for most things. Be anxious for the little things. How about the big things? What does no thing mean? What is a thing? It's a noun. It's a person, place, or thing. If it's got a name, don't be anxious for it. If it's got a name, he said, don't be anxious about it. I don't care what it is. Does Bill have a name? Don't be anxious about bills. Does pain have a name? I ain't anxious about pain. Does surgery, does cancer, anything that has a name, I will not be anxious about it. I'm going to be in faith trusting God for it. You have to know the difference. Because some of you have been anxious about everything. And what, what, what most people don't understand is anxiety is a taught behavior. You're taught to be anxious. You're taught that. And you weren't taught, about, taught that from the word of God. You were taught it from people who, who didn't understand the fullness of what the word meant. We'll just say it like that. Because, and us parents, some of us have been passing down that anxiety to our kids. Well, my mama told me about this, so I got to tell you about that, because she was a good parent to me, so that's how I'm a good parent to you. It's my job to pass down the generational anxiety that we all have. My kids, from the early age, were taught about faith. Almost from the day they, they came out the womb, I was teaching Kyle and Kayla about faith. And I used to tell them, listen, you can keep asking me for stuff. But all I'm going to do is ask God for whatever it is that you want. Do you know how much easier it would be for you if you just eliminated the middleman? And ask God for yourself. Trust him for yourself. Because there will be some things you need to trust him for that me and your mom ain't going to be there for. So, Pastor Kiana, when she was younger, we used to always speak. Kiana's going to go to school on a full-ride scholarship, and we won't have to pay a dime for her to go to school. And there wasn't a whole bunch of scholarships coming in. But we had already made that confession that this is what's going to happen. And we never, ever stop saying what we believe. And so, what, the middle of August or so? Or was it sooner than that? Maybe July? Her senior year, her, actually it would be her, the summer of her freshman year. I don't know how she hooked up with these individuals. I'm just got, glad God always has a ram in the bush Amen. for those who trust the Lord. She hooked up with the Noel Compass Group. And not only did they give her a full ride scholarship, food, bedding, room and board, books, everything paid for and then gave her a job so she'd have some money in her pocket. But how did we get that? We had a belief in our heart, and we were bold enough to speak what we believed and what we wanted. Again, faith is the foundation on which your desires are obtained. But you have to get to a place where it's not just, 
I heard that. I know it. I'm saying it. That's not how this works. It's not you read the scripture, you say it, and you got faith. Because so many people think that's it. Well, I read that. I believe it. That's all I need to hear. Uh, no. Romans 4.17 says this. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the process of whom, in, I'm sorry, in the presence of whom he believed God. Who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist. As though they did. What do you want to exist in your life that you haven't been saying? Because we have to get past the fear of what if it don't happen? I'm going to look like a fool. But what if it does happen? They're going to look like a fool. You have to be willing to say what you believe God has said to you. When I was going after this new building, I stretched my faith. When I tell you, I was out there. And sometimes you got to be willing to be on an island when God tells you to say something or do something. Yeah. And you could be holding on by a thread, but if all you need is a grain of a mustard seed, a thread will do if that's what you need to get what God's called you to do. And so I'm out there and I got all the pressure of well this building is paid for, why are you moving? We're, the economy is kind of in a recession. Nobody's really going to church right now. I don't have time to be thinking about where we are. My job is to continually think about where we're going. Because where you are right now ain't always going to be. And you have to be ready for where you're going. Preparation time is never wasted time. And so I understood it's time. God had spoken to me. This is it. So I did everything that I could by faith to get us where I believe God has called us to be. Was there plenty of opposition? You bet there was. I had people who weren't even members of this church talking about why are y'all moving? Why is that your business? <laughs> are you going to give to it? No. Have you ever even come through the doors? No. Here's some shut up. Sip on it. Sip on some of the shut up. You can either take it straight to the head. <laughs> oh. I want you to open it up with a tall frosty can. <laughs> no, no, no. But you have to get to a place where you don't care how people feel about you following the plan of God for your life. And it could be some of the people closest to you. Because remember, Judas was one of the 12. So you don't expect it to come from folks in the squad. We must take God at his word. What God declares, the believing heart confesses without the need for further proof. Let me say that again. What God declares, the believing heart confesses without the need of further proof. God, when you said it to me, I, I, that's all I need to hear. Did you say it? And what I love about God is he'll say it the first time, and if you don't hear it, he understands that. He'll say it again. And again, until you hear it then once you've heard it, then it's up to you to do something with what you've heard. And so when I heard from God, it's time. This is it. This is the place. 
this is where I want you to move my people. And this is where I want my people to infect this area. Because we're going to infect that area with the presence, the will, the word, and the love of God. But you cannot give up when God tells you something. You cannot give up on it and backtrack. They were singing a song earlier. Said, I will remain. What does that mean? I'm going to stay at this place. I'm going to plant myself, stay here, and not be moved. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says this. And since we have the spirit of faith, According to as it is written, I believe and therefore I speak. We also believe and therefore we speak. I'm sorry, I jumped around. But let me put this in proper context. You have to get enough of the word of God in your life and in your heart that you've settled whether or not that thing is a done deal. I mean, you have to be at a point like, as I said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth leaketh, because your heart is full of the word, so your mouth leaketh the word. But you have to get to a place where, before you ever open up your mouth, you got to make sure you believe. He says, I believe. Then, I spoke. He, said, he didn't say, I spoke until I believed. No. Don't open your mouth until you're fully persuaded that what you have is yours, regardless to whether or not it's manifested out here yet, it has manifested in here. It's manifested in your heart to a place where you don't even have room in your mind to think about anything else because it has dominated your heart and that began to dominate your thinking. How many times have you heard a word and it's dominated your heart so much that it began to dominate how you think. You can't stop thinking about that word or that which was said. Or, but that's what it's designed to do. I got to dominate your heart so I can dominate your thinking and then I'll dominate your speech. And then I'll dominate that situation because you just invited all of my power of faith into that situation to work together for your good. Amen. I got to stop. Um, whew, there's so much in here. Um, Hebrews 10 and 23, I'll stop there. It says this. When things get rough, when it looks like it's not going to happen, when it looks like the deck is stacked up against you. When you look like your, your back up is up against a wall and you've put you out there and you've put God's word out there, what do you do when it starts to look like it's not going to happen? That works too. But Hebrews 10 and 23 says this. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hold on to it. Don't let your circumstance steal it from you. He said, hold fast to the profession of your faith, which means we ought to be professional faith walkers. Not amateurs. We ought to build ourselves up where we're professionals. This is because we walk by faith. We live by faith. We, we, we Without it, it's impossible to please God. We should be professional at this by now. The Amplified says it like this. Let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. Hold on to it, y'all. The main thing Satan comes to do when he's coming after your faith is he comes after your confession of faith. Because he understands if I change their speech, I can change their direction. So 
he comes after, first of all, your belief of what you just said. Did you really mean what you just said? Remember, isn't that what, what Satan did to Jesus in the, uh, in, the, uh, 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 in the wilderness? Isn't that what he did? He challenged everything that the word said. And what did Jesus do in rebuttal? He spoke the word again. But that's how crazy Satan is. How are you going to challenge the word on the word? How, how do you challenge the word on the word? I am the word made flesh. You're challenging me on what I am? That's like me saying, you ain't really tired. Prove that you tied to me. I'm going to challenge you. you. You're really Jonathan. That's who you are. You're Jonathan. I don't care what nobody says. Jonathan? You're like, dude, how are you going to tell me who I am? And that's what Satan is going to do with your confessions. He's going to challenge you. Do you really believe what you say? Do you really believe that you're a believer? Or are you a doubter, a wolf in sheep's clothing? So we have to hold fast to it because there's going to be a challenge. But your winning recipe is, I may not always act like it, but I promise you I'm going to speak like it. I may not always get it right, but I'm never going to stop saying what's right. And when you hold fast to that confession, you then give the word the power to get what it came out to because God said it won't return back to him incomplete. But it will accomplish. Not it might. Not there's a good possibility. He said it will accomplish that which I've sent it out to. So what are the things that you need to send the word or stick the word on? What are the things in your life that the word is the only answer for? It? And me trusting and believing the word and releasing it to create what I needed to create for me. Because you've tried everything. You, you're like the woman with the issue of blood. You done threw all the money you can at that situation and it hasn't changed. You done, you done sought after all the people who said they had the answers for it, but it ain't got any better, but it's gotten worse. You didn't, you didn't talk to all the gurus. You didn't talk to all the masters of all the coaches that could get you there. But you got worse. Stop going to the word as a last result and go to it as the first option. The first option. You got something going on in my life? What you finna do? Go to the word. I'm going to see what God has to say about it. Because everything he says is yes and amen. I'm going to see what he's got to say about it. And stop relying on folk who, oh yeah, I tried that, but it didn't work. Did you try it by faith? Or were you tried by faith and faith found out you didn't work? So listen. We got to come up in our thinking. We got to come up in our trusting God. We're called believers because that's what we do. We believe. But we are called to believe the word of God and not anything that's opposite of the word. And sometimes when all you say is the word, you can be seen like you're a fanatic or you're weird. I care what you call me, but at the end of the day, you're going to call me successful. You're going to call my life peaceful. You're going to call me healed, delivered, and set free. And you're definitely going to call me saved. I don't even even care if you call me churchy. But know this. I got a peace that surpasses all understanding for the same things you're anxious for. So we have to stay at a place where the word 
rules, leads, guides, and settles us. And then allow it to build us up to where we need to get to so we can obtain what it is God has for us. Amen? With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here this morning, you've never made Jesus Lord of your life. What better time than now? Because all of us know that tomorrow is not guaranteed. All you have is right now and this moment. And if this is the last moment you have to get it right with God, why not leave that up to chance? Why leave that up to chance? So if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, right where you are, raise your hand. Say, that's, Pastor, I, I, I need to get this right. I need to get my life at a place where me and God are working as partners in this plan that he set before me on this journey that he's called us to fulfill. So, Father, I thank you for all that are here. But, Father, multiply us. Multiply us, Father. By faith, I speak 2,000 new partners with World Outreach this year. I thank you, Father, that they're coming in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They're coming in to be trained. They're coming in to be loved. They're coming in to be delivered and set free. They're coming in for hope and direction. And so we thank you, Father, that not only will they come in, but they will be participants in the journey and in the plan and the purpose that you have for us as a whole and for us individually. I thank you, Father, that this is the will of God. And we receive it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's thank God for the word. You know, I absolutely, I love to receive the word in this kind of an environment where it's just... You know, ain't no, we ain't hanging off the rafters, but the word is coming. That double-edged sword is coming in, and it's really piercing our heart. And, you know, something I wanted to say about something that Pastor Skip said, this whole process of hearing from God and following God. I've been through many faith endeavors with Pastor Skip, but the one that we just came through has probably been the most intense of them all. And at some point, the Lord said to me, like, and I was just looking it up in the scripture in Acts, the fifth chapter. When Peter and John and the apostles, they were caught in. They were, they were brought in because somebody got healed and they were interrogating them. And one of the leaders, when they were interrogating them, said, leave these men alone. Leave these men alone. Because if it's God that's spoken to them, you will not be able to stop them. But before they said that, they said, if it's of a human origin, it's going to fail. But if it's of God, you will not be able to stop them. And the next verse of scripture said, and you might find yourself fighting against God. I saw that verse of scripture. I was like, what God say? What'd he say? And so there is just a, a submission when you begin to see God move. Because it doesn't always, it don't, it's not going to make sense. It don't make sense. It's faith. And so I just want to encourage those of you that are in your positions of faith. Hold fast to your position. And if you've got people in your environment that are not standing with you, Find a company of people that will. Because I'm telling you, there are people out here who understand the sacrifice that's necessary to walk by faith. 
who's in a faith journey right now? Where you at? Oh, my God. I didn't expect all them hands. Everybody in the room. And he said, Pastor Skip said, everybody should be. But there are some of you that you are in a, you are in a twixt. Meaning you're in a tight space in your walk of faith. And you've got people in your ears saying things to you and about you. Because you've made a decision to walk by faith. I called Jose one day. And I said to Jose, I've never seen Pastor Skip in the position that I see him in right now. And when it was all said and done, I heard my husband scream. I'm talking about at the top of his lungs. Because God had done it. And this is what he said when he screamed. You said you wouldn't leave me out here by myself. You said that you would not put me to shame. And on his knees, he fell to his knees, and I'm standing in the doorway, and I'm watching him with tears rolling down his face. And for me that day, it marked it. Wherever you go, I'm going. Whatever you do, I'm doing it. And for the rest of my days on this earth, I will be with you and I will be behind you seeing God's plan come to fruition in your life and in your ministry. So I'm telling you that there will be people that will get up under you and they'll carry the weight of whatever it is that you're carrying. Who is that one that I'm talking about? And that ain't everybody. If you're in this place and it's been a struggle for you, I want you to stand up. And I want you to come forward. Kim, I need some oil. I'm going to lay my hands on you. Pastor Skip, you're going to leave? You're going out, okay. It ain't going to take me all day to do this. For those of you that said, we got to go, it ain't going to take all day. It's Carmen. Carmen. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, y'all, lift your hands up. Matthew 18, 19 says, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it will be done for you of my Father which is in heaven. And so I set my agreement with you that the thing that you're believing for, the ministry, the business, the money, the healing, whatever it is that you've got your faith released for, right now in the name of Jesus, I set my agreement. I'm hooking up with you. We are hooking up with you and we're saying it's done. In the name of, say it's done. Call it done in the name of Jesus. So Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that the power of God is flowing in you, bringing about the thing that you desire to see. By faith, we agree. I set my agreement with you. It is done. It is done. God said it's done. It's done in the name of Jesus. It's done. Every provision in the name of Jesus, it is done. No more worry, no more fret, no more tears. It is done in the name of Jesus. No more worry, no more fret, no more wondering those nights that you're waking up in the middle of the night. God said, the so is coming. So the night watches, the night watches are going to turn into information sessions with God. Hey,
Legandola Barra Masita Nemere Basoto. It's yours, it's your Tara Baso. Yebaroma Sanda La Branda La Bramba Basota. In the name of Jesus, I seal my agreement with you. No more toil, no more toil, no more toil. And it doesn't matter who doesn't believe, it doesn't matter who doesn't believe. Oh, Barona Namata La Braba Soto Robo Shata La Bakota. You're healed. You're healed in Jesus' name. I receive a robo shaki at the bosai, the supply necessary to release to you right now. In the name of Jesus, your body, your body, your body receive. I speak to every cell in your body that has no business being there and command you in the name of Jesus to get out of this body right now in the name of Jesus. Healing is yours. It's yours. In the basho. Nengrende de bosan de yours for the taking it's yours for the taking everything that you believe in your faith your faith your faith your victory your faith your victory this is yours anda la masu nen grande le barono no sando la masu da la bata len grande le basoto complete restoration complete restoration complete and total restoration saith god in the name of jesus hola baroma soto robo sata you're not in between healings you are healed you're not in between healings you're healed ando lo borra basata elebra mama maso elebra mama soto and you're not in between blessings you're blessed you're not in between blessings you're blessed you're not in between blessings you're blessed in the name of jesus ando lo borra masata mendi Father, thank you for the ministry of Jesus. Wisdom, information, understanding, the when, the where, the how. Make the move God is saying. No, don't be afraid to make the move. Everything that you give up to step forward, there will be more on the other side. Don't reason with it. Don't reason with it. Just obey it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We agree, we agree. I agree with you. I set my agreement with you that it's done. The decision is yours. The decision is yours to make. Make it in the name of Jesus. I agree, I agree with you. I agree with you that you will have the wisdom that you need for every step, every way, every way in the name of Jesus. Oh, don't be afraid to let go. Don't be afraid to let go. Just let it go. And you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. Oh, la brabashata. The spirit of seeing and knowing rest on you. Iglanganda la bramba basondo le botande de de bosa. There's the anointing. There he is. There he is. Adorobosanda la manda la baruto no mosata. Nondorobosa. Thank you, Jesus. Ando la makaya de baba baba sondo robobosa. I ando la borra mama sanda le barona na masoto. Thank you, Father, for the open door. Thank you, Father, for the decision. Thank you, Father, for the way. I agree. I agree. We agree. In the name of Jesus. I speak to you, foul spirit of Parkinson's. Get out of this body. Get out of this body in the name of Jesus. I command you from the root to the back. Get out. Get out in the name of Jesus. This body belongs to Jesus, and the Spirit of God lives on the inside of it. I speak to every nerve, every cell in your body, stability in every nerve in your body, every cell in your body, your blood flowing as God created it to flow. Oh, bringing about a healing and a cure, bringing about a healing, bringing about a healing in the name. In the name so you foul stinking devil you cannot have this body you cannot have this body you will not have this body in the name of Jesus we surround her under the debostia 
Legendi and the Debo Sita Rabba Basoto, Yangandola Masada, and the Andola Basota. In the name of Jesus, you heal. You heal. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you that every bondage is broken. Every bondage is broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, the Gandala Maroto no Mosata, Bando Nama Idebaso. You worry too much, the Lord said. Worry in your mind. It doesn't come out of your mouth, but it's been in your mind. We free you right now to freely think about the things that God said. I've given you every blessing. Every favor is yours. I'm Rama. No more worry. No more fret. No more worry. No more fret. My provision is yours. My provision is with you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree for every desire that you have, every purpose. I agree with you that it's done. I agree with you. I agree. Don't second theremasu. Don't second guess it. Just step into it. This is God. This is God. This is God. You're going to know. You're going to know without a shadow of a shone, without a shadow of a doubt. Yes, you hear the voice of God. The devil is a liar. He's making you think, is it me? Is it God? It's God, God is saying. It's me speaking into your life. Move, Tracy, forward. Move forward into the things that I've called you. Don't lay down. Don't lay down. Now's not the time. Now's the time to press into the fullness of the plan of God for your life. The direction, the fulfillment for your life and for your husband. No more worry. No more worry. No more worry. I agree with you. Every desire is fulfilled in Jesus' name. And there's an anointing on both of you. In the name of Jesus. I agree, I agree, I agree with you. The ministry that you desire to have in the name of Jesus. The setting apart that you've done of your life as a young person, the Lord is saying, I see it, I know it, I'm blessing it, I'm increasing you. The anointing, the anointing to speak my word, the anointing to influence your generation, it rests on you. And so God, I thank you that every opposition to the call on our life, we move it out of the way right now. And we thank you for that anointing. Oh. I agree with you and I agree with you in the name of Jesus that every desire is fulfilled every desire is fulfilled faith, faith, faith by faith, by faith, by faith Faith fulfilled, faith fulfilled in your life. And I don't know what this means, but I see money. And I don't know what this means, but I see money, I see money, I see money. There's a desire in your heart to increase in a particular realm. So God, we agree with this couple that your financial provision, your financial increase rests with them. The wealth that you desire, it's yours. It's yours for the taking. And so, Lord, thank you that you said that it's already there. Now open up the eyes of their understanding and show them where to go, what to do, how to tap into it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Every favor, every blessing, every increase for all that you have poured out. For all that you have poured out. For all that you have poured out. In the name of Jesus. Oh, la ka ita maroto no sembramba basoto robosha. We pray, thank you, Father, for her cards being in Walmart. Thank you, Father, for her cards being in bookstores. Thank you, Father, for her ministry being all over the world. Thank you, Father, God, that her poems will be in places that she's asking, how did they get there? And she will know, she will know that God has moved every desire, every purpose is basoko because you have refreshed many. Now God is saying, be refreshed. Be refreshed. Be refreshed. Be refreshed. Be refreshed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Dalaman, I agree with you. 
that the thing that you desire in your heart and in your light is fulfilled. It's fulfilled. It's done in the namasuto rabasa. Engre me shekando da baso, elegando la braba soto la baramande de baro bobosa. Zone grande de baso, iando rabasa e baro tono mosa. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for direction. Thank you, Father, for wisdom. Thank you, Father, for the influence that you've given her. For the desire, Father God, to turn that group of individuals that your heart is longing to minister to, the Lord is saying, if not now, when? If not now, when? If not you, who? And so, Father, I agree with her. I set my agreement with her that she will fulfill all that you have called her to do and the glory of God will man basoto will rest on you in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. Robo shanda la baronda la pranda la baronda na kire de mosata. Endi anda na masonda la brama maso. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you in the name of Jesus. I agree with you that every blessing every I agree with you, every blessing, every favor. I agree with you, every blessing, every favor. Every blessing, every favor. Every blessing, every favor. Onda la baroto no mo shata rabasota. Yendi andana masonda la bramba babasoto. It is abasoto robosha. It is time for you to get in your place. Get in your place. Get in your place, God is saying. Ramaso. Rende le branda le bramba babasoto robosha. Gengi anda le baro mama sonda le breve bebe sota la braba basoto rende li anda na magonda le masada le braba mama soto I agree with you in the name of Jesus I agree with you in the name of Jesus in the name in the name of Jesus Rondola mosanda le masoto robosanda I don't even know who this is but in the name of Jesus You've been carrying too much You've been thinking about too much your worry is not going to change the circumstance. But I hear the Spirit of God saying to you, just trust, lean in, lean into the trust, lean into the peace, it's already in you. So God, we say yes, we say yes. Andara basonda, nekaratana bora masedere basotona, honey, lift your hands, lift your hands. Submission, God's called you and you know it. God's called you and you know it. And this is your season to set yourself apart for that calling. And as you set yourself apart for that calling, the plan of God will unfold for you. Lean into that. Lean into that. Come on, that anointing is for you. Somebody get behind her. Come on, sister. Just receive. Just receive. Just receive. There you go. There you go. Just receive. everybody let's thank God come on thank you father thank you for the will of God being accomplished thank you Lord we believe we receive come on who receives I believe I receive I believe I receive father everything hallelujah thank you Jesus glory to God now I saw us doing that this early this morning so I just acted out what I saw. Father, we thank you so much today for your grace. And what we're going to do is give you all an opportunity to sow into World Outreach Center. You can text to give at 77977. You can do it that way. Don't forget your pledges. You all, we want to pay off this new building in less than four years. How many of y'all set your faith out with us? Come on, y'all. Four years. Four years or bust. Four years. We are going to believe God. We're going to put our faith out there, and we're going to do that. You can text to give at 77977. Don't forget this is over and above your tithe and or offering. You know, if you step out and you trust God, I'm telling you, I did. I said to the Lord, I said, now I'm looking for you to give me my money for the building fund. And just like clockwork, doors started opening, and the money started coming in. And so I'm telling you, you just do what God said. You just trust him. And he will provide for you. Amen? Amen. All right. We got any video announcements? No video announcements? Everybody stand up. We're going home. Let's lift our offerings up. Father, thank you for giving us seed to sow and bread to eat. 
thank you that you have blessed us beyond measure and we're so grateful for the blessing. We honor you and we bless you and we thank you in Jesus name. Real quick, Marquise and Sharita Robinson, their 19 year old son Cam Kamar drowned this week. His funeral will be here on Thursday can't remember what time. I think it's 11 o'clock. Funeral is at 11. Viewing is at 10. And so those of you that want to support the Robinson family, you can. Some people have been calling saying, how do you give financially? You can just uh, give it online and then just designate it to benevolence. I think that's what we said. If there's a way to put something in the notes, you can do that. Um, outside of that, God bless you all. Thank you once again to everybody that came through here yesterday for Crystal Tucker's funeral. World Outreach Center showed out. Showed out. There were business, there were millionaires here, business people here. There were elected officials here. The media was here. They didn't have their cameras out, but people from the media was here. And at least a thousand people came through this building yesterday. And when I tell you all, the volunteers yesterday showed out. And so I want to thank all of you. The Urban League said thank you. Everybody was just blown away by your service and hospitality. So we love you all. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Those of you that are new members, we will meet you in the pastor's area, right? Classroom A. Those of you that are here for the women in worship meeting, we will meet you in the conference room. God bless you. You're dismissed. Thank you for joining us online today. At World Outreach Center, Pastor Skip and Melba Henderson dedicate themselves to building strong families and appreciate being able to connect with you and yours for this worship experience. We encourage you to join interactive chats and discussions by posting on our online platforms. You can also post prayer requests and even join the WOC family. As digital members and friends of World Outreach Center, you have a variety of options when giving. Digitally, you may visit our website to give online or text World Outreach Give to 77977 or you can go the old-fashioned route and mail your gifts to 3410 West Silver Spring Drive, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53209. If you want to give automatically, it's simple. When you visit our website, set up your secured online donor account, choose when you want to give, and voila, you're done. We love you and thank you for your continued support. opportunity to become the disciple of Jesus that he's always wanted you to be. Our mission is to position you so that you will walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, and act like Jesus in your everyday life. We believe that those are the four things that are critical to every individual that's looking to be discipled and looking to grow in their relationship with God. And so in the coming weeks and months, you're going to be hearing more and seeing more about House Church. We're taking our small group ministry to the next level, and we hope that you'll join us. Join us for 2021 as we unleash House Church. God bless you. We love you all.